Hi guys, um, so I've got the undercoat down with the GW Chaos Black. So once that's down, I noticed there's a few little areas of detail which were still showing the resin. For example, just underneath these coats and sort of in between the legs. I tried to get as much with the main spray as I could, but in some areas it's a little bit fiddly. And with uh, models with extra detail, that's always going to be the case. So what I did is I got my Imperial Primer and normally I would just use a brush and I would just, you know, fill in the little bit of gaps. But instead what I did is I took this and I got my medium, which is like a sort of thinner, I guess. And I put that in my airbrush and that allowed me to, with my airbrush, get into all the little gaps and give everything a quick blast just to make sure everything was covered. Now I'm going to do the base coats and the base coat is for the coats. So I'm going to do like a grey colour for like a traditional trench coat. It's a bit hard to see because these guys are just black on, well, black I guess, background. Um, so they've got carapace armour, but the main bit of covering that I want to get with the airbrush is going to be this uh, coat here. And I'll be building up a kind of natural highlight effect with it as well. So I'll be taking my Eshrin Grey, which will be my kind of base colour, and I'll be thinning it again with my medium technical paint uh, for my airbrush. And that house isn't the proper way of doing it, this is the way I do it. So you could use water to thin your paints down for an airbrush, or you can use like an airbrush thinner. They're like the two correct ways to do it, but I find that the medium is kind of just as good. It's basically a transparent paint, so it thins it down, but keeps the consistency still the same as what it should be for the paint. So because this is slightly transparent, the way I put it on, you'll still see some black underneath, which I'll show you in the finished once I've got it down. Um, so it builds up the color the more you spray on it. So you can create a natural highlighting by kind of consistently, if you're spraying from one direction downwards, you'll be building up that gray, leaving some of the darker areas in the shade where the black of the undercoat is still showing. So this creates a kind of natural highlighting effect. It's quite similar to Zenith highlighting, which is where your spray kind of down like this, but you'll use a white spray at kind of, a, as it is at the moment, a white spray going down and then it'll create a natural like sunlight effect. So when you can, then you can just do base layers on everything and you've still got that kind of natural highlighting. So I'm doing a similar thing, but I'm using the actual colors to create the same effect. So I've got a couple of models that I've already uh, painted up. So I've got my sergeant here and I'm just going to be using him as a reference point in terms of the grey. And as you can see at the moment, I think it might be the lighting. Uh, he looks pretty dark and grimy. So he's not that far off black as it is, but actually prom I promise you that like, he is grey. So I'm going to use him as like a little reference point. So I'm going to constantly check my models as I'm spraying them to the same colour because what I don't want to do is like overspray and end up with a really light colour and there I end up with two different colour schemes for my different models. So I put the Escherin grey base layer down. I've got another model for comparison just so you can uh, see but it is actually super subtle. Um, if you look at the actual base itself that's the kind of black and you can just about see the grey on there and it's a similar grey to my platoon sergeant. I'll show you the back so you might get a better idea. So it's not very obvious. I think that's partly due to the light and the way the uh, camera picks it up, uh, but it is in there and it looks better sort of in person. Uh, but what I'm going to do to these guys that I don't normally do to my regular platoon guys is uh, put a subtle highlight down of a uh, scaven blight dinge. So that's just going to lighten it up slightly and it create a bit more of a natural highlight. Uh, and I only tend to do this on kind of like premium models, my like, like kind of commanders and my death riders. So I thought I'd do these to the grenadiers as well. It'll help them make them stand out a little bit more because I'm going to put a bit more effort into painting these than my regular guys. Right guys, so I've put the Scavenblight Dinge um, highlight down. It's kind of super subtle on these guys, especially with the lighting that I've got here at the moment. So you can't really notice it too much. You might be able to see it a little bit more on the backs where it's kind of, I've done it more to the tips of the uh, coat itself on the larger areas.
what I'm going to do now is kind of paint sort of, I guess, inside out. So I'm going to do all the fiddly little bits of detail that are going to be hardest to see. So on the backs, you can often, you might be able to see up here, there's like a kind of inside sock binding. So I'm going to do that first. And then most likely I'm going to do the kind of inner part of the gas mask before I'm then doing all the carapace colours and the face plates and the helmet. I thought I'd change up the camera angle for you guys because the lighting is not very good as it was in the previous videos. Uh, so I've done two lots of browns on the model so far. I've got Rhinox Hide, which is the dark brown colour that I use on the boots and tubing. And then I've got the lighter brown colour, which is a uh, Mornfan Brown, and I use that on the backpacks and the mask colour. So I thought I'd show you a close-up of the uh, Grenadiers. These guys are the specialist weapon ones that carry the melter. As you can see, I've done the dark brown on the boots and also the belt and the tubing on the front. And there you can also see the uh, mask colour. Obviously, it's still got a face plate, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then on the back, I've just done the, um, you can see the sort of right shoulder strap as the darker brown as well as the belt buckle uh, and then sort of just in here you can see sort of slight strapping that uh, goes around the legs I don't know if I can quite get the angle to see inside you can sort of see where it's for lighter grey um, which was the scaven by dinge for the sock colour and then again it's they've got straps there so that was actually super fiddly to do and probably needs a little bit of uh, touching up as well so most of the model is still coloured in the grey, which is the Eshrin grey followed by the Scavenblight dinge, sort of slight highlight. Um, now what I've got to do is do like the Carapus armour colour. So that's going to be the helmets, shoulder pads, this front panel here and um, the shin guards as well. So that's going to be the majority of the model. Um, now for the mask itself, a lot of people paint that white because it's um, obviously it's like a skull design, but in the Siege of Rax book, it's actually um, done black, like a metallic black, which is the same as the Carapus colours. So I figured I'd do that first and see how it looks. It might make the guys look really dark, um, but I'll see how it goes, and then I'll decide. I think actually it'd be nicer to, I think the white might make it look a little bit too cartoonish, because actually the faceplate does look a bit of a, like a cartoon skull. Um, so I want them to be still quite dark and moody and serious. So I'm probably going to go for the darker vibe. But if I feel it makes the Grenadiers just look, if it doesn't make them stand out enough from my regular troopers, then I'll change it up to the white color and do a bit more of a bone, bone white color. Just a quick update for you. I've uh, put down the kind of Carapus colors, which is uh, Chaos Black. But what I do is actually mix it with um, some of uh, this lead belcher just by um, kind of like a two to one ratio of the black to the lead belcher. So you get a, just a very subtle slight sheen on the um, on the carapace. Um, and then what I'll do is make that a bit more prominent later on with um, edge highlighting using a bit more of a lead belcher. Um, so it'd be a really kind of simple technique for getting that slightly kind of dull metallic look. As you can see, I've done it on the face plates as well, as well as the um, shoulder and like the kind of shin guards. I'll just quickly show you the back as well, so you can see it here. So it's also on the rebreather and this um, kind of little canister at the bottom of the backpack. So um, that's it now for all the kind of base colours. I've still got all the detailing to do, which will be um, like this kind of gold colour, which I'll apply to kind of buttons and buckles and things like that. Uh, and then I'll be doing the kind of highlighting of the metal, which will be with more of a lead belcher. Uh, and then that'll be it. I, I've also got the washes to do as well. Um, I'm still not too sure which order I do it in because I don't think it matters too much at this stage. I'll probably put the washes down first and then I'll do the kind of slight highlights and detail colour. Um, but I'll keep you posted. Speak soon.